in which we'll show you a glaucoma bleb. And here you can see this is a typical glaucoma bleb which you're seeing. And uh, this is the outline of the bleb. And this is a cystic bleb which you see over here. This is the bleb. And this is the trap door which you see beneath this. And the flow of the glaucoma bleb is supposed to be in this direction going from this side and going in three sides. So that's why you, it's, if you want to get a good bleb, you need to have a diffuse bleb. And uh, what we've done is the surgery was done more on a corneal side. So there's some bit of overlap or forward advancement of the conjunctiva of the cornea at the limbus. So now we go ahead and uh, look at the bleb while using a slit lamp. What you can do is So using a slit lamp, what you need to do is, if you see a patient after glaucoma surgery, you need to see the anterior chamber depth. So how do you see that anterior chamber depth? What you want to do is, you want to see that line over here. This is the back line and this is the front line of the still slit and this is the anterior chamber depth which you are seeing in this patient. So when you are looking at this, what you want to do is move this slit over and once you move this slit over to the other side, you will see that this area becomes thinner as you move to the other side. So if I clear this area and now if I look at the slit, what you will see over here is the slit is over here like this and the distance is actually become narrower or on this area. So the anterior chamber is shallower on the sides compared to what's uh, on the in the center. So we look forward and go forward uh, in the video on this and look what else do we see on the slit lamp. So go ahead and you move the slit from one side and then you come on to the other side and look at the anterior chamber depth on the other side. And while you're looking in this area, what you can do is what you need to do is look for cells in the interior chamber. So you might see cells in this area. So if this is the slit from behind and this is the slit from the front, or probably we have the slit at this area at the moment. So you need to see this area if it's being highlighted by the slit lamp. So once you've done that, you need to go on a higher magnification to look for those cells in the interior chamber. Here you can see, then you can do a retroillumination actually to see. This is the retroillumination of the lens. So what you want to see over here, what you're seeing over here, this is the optic of the IUL over here. This is the haptic of the IUL. There seems to be a single piece IUL in place. And this is the anterior capsular axis which you see in this area. So you need to identify that in the lens and if you see a pseudophagic patient you also need to identify the site of the incision as well. So let's go forward and see what is happening in this patient. So there's no phimosis, the anterior surface, posterior surface of the IOL seems to be clear. There's no posterior capsular thickening. And then you can study, this is the fundus examination of the same patient. You want to see at the optic disc first. And looking at the optic disc, you can, I'm showing you this video. This is at a higher magnification. What you want to see in this patient is look at the optic disc rim and then calculate the cup to disc ratio. So if we calculate the cup to disc ratio in this patient, so this seems to be higher. There is nasalization. So it seems to be about seven or eight cup disc ratio, and this is nasalization of the vessels on this side. So if I clear it now, so you can see the vessels are tilted towards this side. So this patient has a cup to disc ratio about 0.8 to 0.9, and he's a patient who's undergone trabeculectomy for that procedure. So you, you need to look for any, if the patient is diabetic or hypertensive, you can see for those diabetic retinopathy, look for the macula if it's a post trabeculectomy patient. Look for any macular folds in that patient uh, for hypotony. And if it's a fresh trabeculectomy, what you need to do is look for any choroidal detachment. So there, there I'm looking at this patient and here probably 
what I can see over here to identify over this area. So this is a choroidal detachment which you are seeing present in this area of the fundus. So this is, a, this is the area of the choroid. So it seems to be a dome shaped lesion which is darker in color. And it's different from a retinal detachment. So let's go forward and see what we see over here. So this is the so typically these type of patients with choroidal detachment can have hypotony due to overfiltration, but this patient had a good filtration bleb, but it did have a, a so, so those are the key features which you want to see in a, a patient with post trabeculectomy.